It's the end of 2014 and I've been getting a lot of requests to do a top phones compilation. So I decided to do a top 5 smartphones under $400 or roughly 25,000 Indian rupees for 2014. So before we get into it, a little disclaimer here, after quite a bit of consideration, I decided to make it about phones that were launched this year. So no Nexus 5, no Xiaomi Mi 3, Mi 3 was launched last year technically. So anyway, with that being said, if this is your first time here or in case you've plain all forgotten, my name's Ash and you're watching C4E Tech. Let's get started. So let's get right into it. At number 5, we have the ZTE Grand S2. With a mostly metal body and a little blunt design, this might not look like much, but this phone has specs similar to that of the Nexus 5. Snapdragon 800, 2 gigs of RAM, a larger 5.5 inch display, and more importantly, a higher capacity 2500 mAh battery. The fact that this supports memory expansion via microSD adds to the Grand S2's pros. Another important advantage here is that this phone is being sold here in India, just sold, no flash sales, no invites, just go click buy, be done with it. Anyway, it also has a decent 13 megapixel rear camera that works quite well for still images, but it sucks for video though, video quality is not good, it's a little jittery. And the major disadvantage with this device is that it's still stuck on Android 4.2.2 uh, Jelly Bean. If you can look past that, the ZTE has left the UI mostly stock. It in fact comes with the Google Now Launcher on board. And it also has a few extra features, but those extra features that ZTE has added add value rather than hinder usage. It's also worth mentioning that this Chinese variant of this phone has a larger 3100 mAh battery, Snapdragon 801 on the inside with a 4.3 jelly bean on board, making it an even more powerful device. At number 4, we have the Huawei Honor 6 a 5-inch Full HD display, an octa-core Kirin 920 chipset inside, 3 gigs of RAM. That's plenty of power underneath, but it's a little let down by the GPU. The Mali D628 MP4 GPU is not bad, it runs most games you throw at it, but certainly it's not as powerful as a Reno 330 on our other devices on this list. Check out my Note 3 Exynos with a Snapdragon video to see how mismatched the GPUs are. And remember, the Mali D628 on the Note 3 has two extra cores. That's a 6-core implementation on the Note 3 compared to a quad-core implementation on the Honor 6. So why does the Honor 6 get in ahead of the Grand S2? Well, because it's running on KitKat, the 13 mega megapixel rear camera performs better, especially when it comes to videos, and the 3100 mAh battery on the Honor 6 lasts a lot longer than the one on the Grand S2. There's also a dual SIM variant of the Honor 6 available. For more information, I'll leave links to my individual reviews and links on where to buy these phones from in the description down below, so feel, feel free to check that out. So moving on, at number 3, we have the Nubia Z7 Max. This is the phone that surprised me the most this year. It's an amazing device. With a Snapdragon 801 chip, 2 gigs of RAM, it packs in a lot of power underneath. It's got a great 5.5 inch Full HD IPS display with unique capacitive keys below. And what's special about this phone is that it supports dual SIM cards, comes with 32 gigs of onboard storage, and allows for memory expansion via microSD. Now that's sweet. Now this is the only device that I can think of, barring the Note 3 and Note 4, that has 32 gigs of internal storage and supports microSD cards. Now that's not all. The 13 megapixel rear camera is also exceptional. The user interface is fantastic. It even supports 4K video recording. Add to that, the 3100 mAh battery inside lasts a long time. Now what's great specs without the software to back it up? And that's where the, the Z7 Max stands out. The software, while being nowhere close to stock Android, shines. It's got amazing multitasking functionality, stuff like having two home screens side by side and having the ability to run just about any app you want on either screen is great. The reason why it finds itself at number 3 instead of higher is due to having only 2 gigs of RAM and the fact that it ships without the Google Play Store on board since, it's, since it doesn't officially sell out of China. It's, it's also a little harder to get Google Play services onto this device. So moving on, at numbers 2 and 1, we have the OnePlus One and the Xiaomi Mi 4 respectively. There's, there's a reason why I mentioned these two together. Both have Full HD displays, the same Snapdragon 801 chip inside, the same rear camera sensors, they're pretty similar. In fact, they're so similar that I did a full in-depth comparison video comparing the OnePlus One with the Xiaomi Mi 4 and actually concluded that the OnePlus One is the better device. So what's changed since then? 
To figure that out, let's go back to that video now. In the ones corner, we've got battery life and by a very, very, very narrow margin specs, audio quality, software and price. In the other corner for the Mi 4, we've got the display and cameras. So keep in mind, the final score was 5-2 in favor of the OnePlus One. Now at the time of me shooting that video, the Mi 4 was running on MIUI V5, but now it's been upgraded to V6 and since then the battery life has been much better. So much better as to uh, as to erase the OnePlus One's advantage there. So that made it 4-2 in favor of the OnePlus One. But then again, let's talk about the software, another round that I originally gave to the OnePlus One. One of the main reasons I gave that round to the OnePlus One was because Sunagen mod was closer to stock, fell faster and Xiaomi had not released the kernel sources for the Mi 4. But what's changed since then is that, like I said, the Mi 4 has been updated to MIUI V6, but when V6 initially came out, it had a lot of bugs. Xiaomi has been systematically ironing out these bugs and in a space of few, a few months, today MIUI V6 is extremely smooth and stable. On the other hand, the OnePlus One has had some bugs since it came out that still remain unaddressed till date. Say for example, even with the latest update in place, with gestures turned down, the music player ends up playing a track once in a while. While I agree that a lot of other bugs have been fixed, there's still a lot of work to be done. And to add to it, Cyanogen's relationship with OnePlus has been under stress recently. In India, OnePlus has been shipping phones with software inside that would not be updated. OnePlus have stated that they'd be updating these devices to their own custom software that they were they're working on. So with a lot of confusion surrounding the software, with a lot of confusion surrounding OnePlus's relationship with Cyanogen, I feel anyone buying a Xiaomi Mi 4 would have better assured support today and that made the score line 3 all in my opinion. With the scores level, why do I still give this to the Mi 4? Because I feel the Mi 4 has an edge. Let me explain. Because another round that I gave to the OnePlus One was price. Yes, the OnePlus One still costs a little lesser than the Mi 4, but after months and months of people asking me for invites, I've decided to take into consideration the actual ease of buying the device as well. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a fan of either the invite system or, or Xiaomi's flash sale model. Both make it really annoying for us, the end consumers, to get our hands on the device. But at least with a flash sale model, you register your interest. Then on the day of the, day of the sale, you try a lock. That's it. But the invite system, I feel, is worse. Here's how you can get an invite. 1. Enter contests and promos held by OnePlus, in other words, spam on social media. 2. Be an active user on OnePlus, one for, on OnePlus forums, in other words, spam on social media. Number 3. Go around asking people for an invite, aka spam on social media. All three are great options if they were giving away a OnePlus One, if you wanted to win it, if it were a contest. But no, you aren't, you aren't getting a phone, but rather a chance to buy the phone at full market price. That's ridiculous and that in comparison makes Xiaomi seem like a saint for going with the flash sale model. I, I look past it initially since OnePlus uh, stated that they were going to use the invite system for a while to manage demand, but it's been months and they still have it in place in new countries where they launch, like India, they come in with the invite system. And all these developments in the last few months and Xiaomi's continued support for the Mi 4 improving it, all these have resulted in me going with the Xiaomi Mi 4 as my favorite smartphone, the one I feel is the best under $400 in 2014. Also, an honorable mention to the Nubia Z7 Mini, a great small phone, it was just marginally edged out by the Grand S2. Anyway, these are my thoughts, what are yours? Do you agree with my choices here? If not, what exactly do you disagree with? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and also let me know what your favorite phone below $400 is. The reason I ask you this is because uh, once my Note 4 giveaway is done, I'm going to come back to these comment section in the first week of January and I'm going to check which phone has been mentioned the most times and that is the phone that I'm going to be giving away next. So, and that giveaway will be a global giveaway. So go ahead, let me know uh, what your favorite phone under $400 is and uh, make sure you do stay subscribed and follow me on Twitter at C4E Tech for more details on upcoming giveaways as well. So that's pretty much it guys. Hope you liked the video. If you did, please do give this video a thumbs up. Uh, and for more videos like this, like I said, stay subscribed. Once again, thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, this is Ashia from C4E Tech signing off. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye now.